Welcome to Let That Be Math. In today's video we're going to be talking about how to integrate a polynomial function. Now you may recall from differential calculus that when you have a function such as y equals to x squared, the main idea behind taking the derivative is to look at each point on x and just take the slope of that function. So here by applying the derivative operator to the function y equals to x squared we obtain a straight line that goes negative passes through the origin and then goes positive. So we define the derivative of y as y prime of x and it is equal to 2x in this case. So the question is how can we come back to the original function if we only had the derivative? So is there such a way to reverse this operation? Well as it happens with most of mathematics everything needs to have some kind of inverse. So in this case we're going to apply an operation called the integral. Now the integral is denoted by the following notation. We have a, an s that has these elongated tails that looks like this. We have the function that we would like to obtain the integral of. And then we have the dx factor which is essentially just the infinitesimal increment in the x variable. So this is essentially the same thing that comes into play for the derivative operator where we're taking a very infinitesimally small change of that function with respect to the variable x. Now how can we actually construct a general formula that would allow us to find the integral of any polynomial function? Well we can start off with this simple example here and we know that we have the original function x squared and what we would like to do is we would like to start off from 2x so imagine all we have to work with is the function 2x. We would like to know, okay, what is this the derivative of? So we can apply the integral operator. And somehow we need to get this function to have this exact form. So immediately what we can tell is that whereas with a derivative we would need to decrease the power by one unit and then place that power as a factor at the front if we're going to integrate we should be doing the opposite of that operation. So here what we want to do is we want to increase the power by one unit so we're going to add one to the power and we're going to divide the function by two and in doing so what we're really doing is we're going to get all the way back to x squared. So there are two things we perform in this case we added one to the power and we divided the function by whatever factor was already at the front. Now suppose we started off with a more general example such as x to the power of n. Now we would like to know if we started off with the derivative which is going to be n times x to the power of n minus 1 how can we get from this function all the way to the original function via this integration? And the easiest way to do that is well we're just going to add 1 to the power again. So we have x n minus 1 plus 1. So this is the main change we're performing here. And then we're going to divide this function by n. So the idea is to cancel out that term. And that will get us back all the way to x to the power of n. So really what it seems here is that the operation has two main steps. So the first one is going to be to add 1 to the power and then we're going to divide by the new power. So once we carry out this operation the minus 1 and the plus 1 are going to cancel out. The new power of the function is n and we're going to divide that by that new power. So let's generalize that into a very elegant formula. So let's write the integral of any function x to the power of n times dx is simply going to be x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And this is essentially what's going to give us the integral or we can also call it the antiderivative of the function in some cases because it is just taking the inverse operation of a derivative. Now one peculiar thing about this result is that it doesn't really tell you anything about the position of the function along the y-axis. So if we go all the way back to our plot here of y equals to x squared, we know that if we were to plot a similar function, so let's say we take something like y 
equals to x squared minus 1 so that now the function crosses the y-axis at the point minus 1. If we take the derivative of that we're still going to get the exact same function y prime equals to x because the constant is going to become zero. So no matter where you place that parabola you're still going to get the same derivative. This integral here doesn't tell you which of those parabolas we're going to get or which function we're going to get out of that operation. So to generalize this even further we're going to add a constant of integration and we're just going to denote it as c because that's the notational convention in most textbooks and really what this is saying is that for any integration not just for powers of x but anything else that we want to integrate we should always include a plus c at the end because there's always going to be some kind of shift along the y-axis that is not going to be accounted for by the derivative so this is the piece of information that gets lost during the differentiation step of that function. So now using this general formula let's apply it and see what happens with a couple of examples. So let's start off with a very simple one. We have the function x cubed and we would like to know what exactly is going to differentiate into this function. So using the formula above we're just going to increase the power by one unit so that becomes x to the power of 4 and then we're going to divide that by the new power which is x over 4 and then we're going to add the arbitrary constant c now how can you check your answer is correct well you can simply take your final answer and you can differentiate it and you should get back to the original function so let's apply the derivative operator to that we're going to differentiate x to the power 4 divided by 4 And now the 4 is going to come down, that's going to leave us with 4 divided by 4. And then we're going to reduce the power by 1 unit, so that's going to become 3. And the constant is just going to become 0, because we know the derivative of a constant is 0. So that means when we cancel out that 4 on the x cubed, we just get x cubed. And that's exactly the same term we started with when we performed the integration. So now that we have this general formula, we can apply it to a bunch of different exercises. And in the next video, we're going to go through some more complicated examples just to see how we can generalize this concept even further. And before we go, just make sure you hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from Let That Be Math. I will see you guys in the next video.